Hello, good morning. My name is Aiden Golden, and I'm the summer youth intern for First United Methodist Church. Today's scripture is from Ephesians chapter 4, verse 11 through 16. The gifts he gave were that some would be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors, and teachers, to equip the saints for the work of ministry for building up the body of Christ until all of us come to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, to maturity, to the measure of the full stature of Christ. We must no longer be children tossed to and fro and blown about by every wind of doctrine, by people's trickery, by their craftiness and deceitful scheming. But speaking the truth in love, we must grow up in every way into Him who is the head, into Christ, from whom the whole body, joined head, joined and knit together by every ligament with which it is equipped, as each part is working properly, promotes the body's growth in building itself up in love. This is the Word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. So as I said in the beginning, my name is Aiden Golden. I have been, I was in the youth program for almost three years, and for those that do not know, uh, as I said earlier, I am the summer youth intern. When I first attended the youth program, I was not a very social person and had trouble engaging my fellow youth. But youth leaders like Sterling Rate, Bob Dent, Angel Rate, Judy Hicks, Kyle Shelton, and Christy Edwards helped me adjust. I did not realize how much of an impact they had made on me until my later youth years. One person who I felt a very special connection with who would give up time out of the day to read me the gospel and ask about my day was Sterling. When I first started attending though, I only knew the ba basic beliefs a Christian should know. The Ten Commandments, David vs. Goliath, Noah's Ark, Jesus' birth, death, and resurrection. But I wanted to learn more about the Methodist Church. This is what led me to do the process called Confirmation, which is learning more about our comp learning more about the Methodist Church as well as some of our core values. Confirmation is where I got to grow more in my beliefs and learn why I worship God in the many ways that I do. When we traveled to CFAT, we learned how other cultures live their lives throughout the world. We also learned how God created everything from the light and the, every living thing. All the adult leaders that I was surrounded with throughout my years taught me different lessons about growing in my faith, like Sterling, Bob, and Kyle, who were my small group leaders for most of my time here. But the one small group that taught me most of the lessons that I know from today is one with I had with Christy Edwards called Love Does. It was based around some of the true stories of one of my favorite writers and Christian speakers, Bob Goff. Every lesson was an interesting story about some point in his life where someone came to him seeking advice. The very first story of this small group was about him. During high school, he was trying to get his GED and he decided to altogether just quit high school. It's, it was crazy. But he decided that he was going to go to Yosemite and look for some jobs and his friend Randy decided to tag along. The main point of his story was that when we need to follow his plan, as doors may shut, there are always some doors that will remain open if we continue to love God. And so when Bob and Randy got home, they went straight to Randy's house. Bob saw that there was something wrong, and, apparent, and Bob didn't know this till then, but the day they had left, the day before, Randy had just gotten married. You see... Randy did not see Bob as this distraction. Instead, he saw Bob as this kid who was about to jump the tracks and needed someone to be with him. Now that I have graduated from high school and have been at college for almost three years directly, I'm still impacted by those same adult leaders. Still, it was not until I received the opportunity to go with the youth on their winter retreat to Dahlonega, Georgia at first. At first, I had to double check my schedule for track and school to see if I could go and it turned out it shaped up perfect for this new adventure. 
I was never able to go on any of the winter retreats when I was in the youth. So when Christy messaged me asking if I would like to be a chaperone for the winter retreat, I was happy to be able to go. But I was also given the small task of writing a sermon on even when it is difficult, we worship. Even though I was a chaperone, I still tried to be fun for the youth. That week helped me realize that seeing myself as an adult leader to the youth helped me understand my faith a little bit more. Specifically this one moment, the small group I was given was not a very talkative small group, but by the end of the retreat, they were tasked with telling us who they saw God working with or where they saw God working within the retreat. And one of my uh, small group students decided to stand up and he said in front of everyone that it was the adult volunteers. It was after the winter retreat that I had reached out to Christy to, about becoming the summer youth intern. And it was not until May that I heard back that I would be working here this summer. One, one time on the mission trip to Western Kentucky, I got to watch some of our youth come together to, with other groups from around the country to be God's hands and feet. This helped me realize even as an adult chaperone or volunteer, your faith can be changed just by watching the youth. This one moment during the winter or the mission trip was we were working on the elderly lady's house that we were working on. We were fixing her roof and yard. Chrissy and the youth produced the idea of making this cross out of the shingles from the roof and writing inspiring words on the back of the paper that was with the cross. This helped me realize that it was truly a blessing to see that the youth words and actions could help something. And when we delivered the cross, uh, they didn't get to talk to this lady a whole lot. And even when they did, we didn't have that much time. But before we left, she turned and told the youth that y'all are truly a blessing. This past service week, we had multiple volunteers spend time with our youth going out to shut-ins, giving them cookies, and listening to their stories of their lives. The group I was with went to George Boutwell's house. We sat, the youth sat there along with myself, listening to George, Mr. Boutwell, talk about his story of the war and how life was afterwards being a drill sergeant. Another moment during service week was when we were at the animal shelter. I watched as a lady had to give her dog away because her two other dogs kept fighting with it. And as I watched her give her dog away, I saw her crying. And But myself and a couple of youth walked over to her and prayed for her. Later that day when we got back for our debrief, the two youth mentioned seeing God working in her with a sign and saying that God would provide her a sign that everything would be okay and that we were that sign. You see, I've had the opportunity this summer to see God's good works from a different point of view as an adult leader. And I can say that having both perspectives of being a youth and having an adult leader help me understand and grow more in my faith, and then being that adult leader that grows from watching the youth grow as well. So, I wanna ask y'all as a congregation, have you grown in your faith, or have you stayed stagnant? When I often think of this verse, I like to think of an adult in kindergarten. I know that kind of sounds kind of silly because kindergarten is for five-year-olds. But we as Christians are developing and growing our faith as we go older. Or is the maturity of our faith at a much younger age than we truly think? We all must be willing to put time, effort, and energy into growing. As I read in the first verse, He gave some apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, and some pastors and teachers. That last bit right there at the end. Some teachers and pastors. You see, we're all still growing in our faith, whether we are youth, adult leaders, and even the pastors are still growing in their faith. We meet in the house of our Lord to learn a new way of how we can live out our faith, whether it's, but most of the time it is about doing things within the church that will have a greater effect on within the ministry itself, whether it is doing 
trivial things on Sundays mornings or helping the youth with events. Of all names Jesus could produce for himself, he chose Emmanuel, God with us. And so I asked the question, who could we be Emmanuel to? Who has God dropped on your front porch? Who can you be a great Randy to? Or who has been a great Randy to you? In the second verse, his purpose was to equip God's people for the work of serving and building up the body of Christ. You see, in that verse, I want to think that adult leaders for the youth group should want to help them live out their faith to the point where they can go out in the world, whether it's local works here in Pell City or mission trips somewhere in the U.S. or out of the country even, to spread God and Jesus' love for all of us. It also means to me that even as adult leaders, we can be changed by hearing the youth's words and seeing their actions. As I said with the youth giving the lady battling cancer, hearing her say that they were a blessing means the world knowing that our youth helped make a difference, not just in one person's life, but in many people's lives over the last couple of days. The third verse, until we all reach the unity of faith and knowledge of God's Son, God's goal is for us to become mature adults, to be fully grown measured by, stand, by the standard of the fullness of Christ. I once believed that if I got baptized as soon as I got in the church, I would be saved. But I realized that was not mature because I did not feel that my faith was where it needed to be. So I spent time going to every Wednesday lesson at small group and every Sunday to grow and learn my faith. For the fourth verse, as a result, we aren't supposed to be infants any longer who can be tossed and blown around by every wind that comes from teaching with deceitful scheming and the tricks people play to deliberately mislead others. Being in the youth group, we were never treated like kindergartners unless we were doing something wrong. But when we were being tutored in our small groups, it was like we were having an adult conversation. That is what faith is about, going to know the knowledge that God wants us to understand. And when we see our good works being poured out into the youth at mission sites and other places, we know that we have made a difference. In the fifth verse, instead, by speaking the truth with love, let's grow in every way to Christ. This goes back to where, as adult leaders, we want to grow the youth's face to the point where they reach out to the local community to provide for anything or even other city communities that are dealing with issues, as well as helping teach them that there are many ways to live out your faith by talking to those at school that might be dealing with something. The final verse, who is the head, the whole body grows from him as it is joined and held together by all the supporting ligaments. The body makes itself grow in that it builds itself up together with love as each one does its part. When I listen to that verse, I picture the youth and the adults are the supporting ligaments that help grow our bodies. But it is also the same way for the adults as the youth are also those same supporting ligaments. And we, we're all trying to support each other we, with love and trying to grow each other to become stronger in our faith. So if we love each other, we shall build each other up to grow stronger in our faith as we continue to seek God and Jesus' love. So I wish to send you off with one last question I had asked earlier. Who could we be Emmanuel to? Who has God dropped on your front porch? Who can you be a great Randy to? Or who has been a great Randy to you? Who can we help go in their faith? You are my vision, O King of my heart. Nothing else satisfies, only you, Lord. You are my best all, my 
by day or by night, waking or sleeping, your presence, my light. treasure 